The river flowed. Grass grew. Seasons turned to years. Years to centuries. Tranquility prevailed. Teepees dotted the countryside. It seemed that it might never change. Change, however, is inevitable, and change it did in the land of pine trees and the beautiful river. This was an area destined to become the center of an inland empire. First came the fur traders led by the Canadian Northwest Company, who in 1810 established a post at the confluence of the Spokane and Little Spokane Rivers. Spokane House thus became the first permanent post to be established in those parts of either Washington or Oregon which drain into the Columbia River. The first school in the area was conducted in 1830. Spokane Gary, an Indian youth, was sent to Canada in 1825 by the Hudson's Bay Company to be trained in white man's tradition. Upon his return, Gary became the area's first school teacher, teaching the Spokane's Christian religion, English, and simple agriculture. His schoolhouse was a crude tule mat structure. Elkanah Walker, and Cushing Eels. Missionaries to the Spokanes arrived in 1838. They chose a site 35 miles from Spokane on Shimakin Creek to establish a mission. Spokane House had been abandoned 12 years previously and consequently Walker and Eels were the first white men to live in the area for more than a decade. The need for transportation across the Spokane River was recognized by Antoine Plant, part Indian and French Canadian. During the 1850s, Plant built and operated a ferry in the Spokane Valley at the site of an old Indian ford. The trail leading to the ferry is still visible in some places. Still, no large settlement existed in the Spokane area. The general solitude was interrupted in 1858 when Colonel George Wright and his troops marched through and bitterly defeated the Spokane Indians. This was in retaliation for an earlier defeat of Colonel Edward J. Steptoe's forces at the site of present-day Roselle. The 1860s provided little evidence to indicate the area by the bounding falls would drastically change. The Mullen military road between Walla Walla and Fort Benton passed through the valley from the south, but was having no great effect on the growth of the region. In 1871, a new and significant sound was added to the roar of the cascading Spokane River. 
It was the sound of hammers, of men busily engaged in building a cabin and small sawmill on the south side of the river. No one then realized that J.J. Downing and S.B. Scranton were building what would be the first business in the city to be Spokane Falls, Washington Territory. From this inauspicious beginning, the village emerged. James N. Glover, commonly referred to as the father of Spokane, purchased the mill in 1873 and began his business ventures which would help build the infant community into a bustling city. Missionary H.T. Cowley became the first pioneer teacher in Spokane in 1875. His students were Indians. The first public school was a one-room structure that began operation in 1876. Impetus to growth was provided in 1881 by the completion of the Northern Pacific Railroad to Spokane Falls, now incorporated. Discovery of gold in the Coeur d'Alene's in 1883 resulted in a rush that greatly affected the city. Throngs of would-be prospectors stopped in the city for provisions. The mining business brought much wealth to Spokane, not from the expected gold, but from lead and silver. The Spokane River was harnessed to provide electric power for the first time in 1885. By 1889, the year of Washington statehood, Spokane Falls boasted hotels, many businesses, Gonzaga University, Spokane College public schools, and a library. Then came a fateful day, August 6th, 1889. Disaster struck in the form of terrifying flames. By evening of that day of days, 30 blocks, the heart of the business district, had been leveled by the most devastating fire in Spokane's history. Gloom and discouragement settled over the town. But gloom was short-lived. Spokane Falls was a city with great civic pride, and as soon as the ashes cooled, its citizens began the job of rebuilding a bigger and better city.
Spokane is the recognized capital, the industrial and commercial center of the great Inland Empire. The Inland Empire is a great basin rimmed by the Canadian Selkirk Mountains on the north, Rockies on the east, Blue Mountains on the south, and the Cascades on the west. This is an area of four beautiful seasons. The climate in the Spokane area differs dramatically from that of other major areas of the Pacific Northwest. Whereas Seattle has a normal precipitation of over 34 inches per year and Portland over 42 inches, Spokane averages 17 inches annually. From simple pioneer beginnings, public and private forces have forged a strong educational system. City and valley public and private school systems point to achievement ranking with the best in the nation. Opportunities for higher education abound in the Spokane area. Today, Whitworth College, located among the pines north of the city, Gonzaga University, Spokane's oldest institution of higher learning, Eastern Washington State College at nearby Cheney, Fort Wright College of the Holy Names, located at the site of the historic old military fort, and Spokane Community College, are all helping provide excellent educational opportunities. From time immemorial, the sparkling Spokane River has held a magnetic lure for man as it flows from Lake Coeur d'Alene to the Columbia like a life-giving artery. At the falls within the city, its pulse fluctuates with the dawn of each new season. Early pioneers harnessed the Spokane River. Little did they realize that eventually seven power developments would be located along its 142 mile course. Now, huge dams are located in the Inland Empire, all connected for effective utilization by the Northwest Power Pool. The vast amount of available electric power has helped attract increasing numbers of businesses to the Spokane area. Largest of these is the aluminum industry. A wide variety of other industries, large and small, find the Spokane area ideally suited to their needs. The largest operating industrial park in the northwest is located in the Spokane Valley. Situated in a suburban location, it serves as an ideal facility for small and large manufacturing, warehousing, and distribution. Spokane's transportation systems link the area to national and international points. Spokane is the largest rail center west of Minneapolis, St. Paul, on the continental northern route. Beautiful Spokane International Airport is indicative of the growing importance of airline passenger and freight service. Motor freight lines help keep cargo shipments streaming into and out of the city. Huge rigs make up the fleet of more than 30 motor freight lines serving the Spokane area. Highway transportation is aided by a fine network of highways and interstate freeways. Not only has Spokane become the industrial and transportation center of the Inland Empire, it is also a recognized center for a wide variety of health services. Sacred Heart Hospital, founded in 1886, was the city's first and is one of the largest privately owned hospitals in the country. Six other hospitals, including the Shriners Hospital for crippled children, house patients from several states and Canada. 
Additional clinics are located within the city and valley. In the days of Spokane's infancy, communication with other parts of the territory and nation were very slow. Today, the citizenry is kept up to the minute on local, national, and world affairs by the latest techniques of modern communication. Spokane claims three commercial and one educational television channel, along with a multitude of radio stations. Two daily newspapers, plus a weekly published in the Valley, keep the latest news available in printed form. Spokane, busy as it is, does not neglect the cultural aspects of a good community. The Cheney Coles Memorial Museum is operated by Eastern Washington State Historical Society. Adjoining Campbell House has been restored to the furnishings and decor of Spokane's Age of Elegance. The museum collection includes excellent exhibits of pioneer relics, Indian artifacts, minerals, and animal life. A fine arts gallery features ever-changing art displays. The Spokane Symphony Orchestra has established itself as a mainstay of cultural entertainment. Symphonies are a highly prized event in the city and packed houses enjoy splendid music. Theater goers are treated to stage performances by the Spokane Civic Theater. To fill the spiritual needs of the community, Spokane and the Valley point with due pride to over 200 churches. Beautiful, inspiring, old and new, these churches draw thousands of the devout to their doorsteps each week. For those desiring varied recreational opportunities, the Spokane area is unsurpassed. 76 lakes are located within a 50-mile radius. A mass exodus is experienced on summer weekends as the citizenry swarms to nearby lakes and campgrounds. The abundance of sunshine is enjoyed to its fullest extent. Amateur and professional sports activities provide the spectator with many choices for entertainment. swimming hole of days gone by has been replaced by modern pools. The fun is still the same. Mount Spokane offers skiing enthusiasts a winter of thrills. Rated among the finest anywhere, city and county golf courses provide beautiful fairways in woodland settings. For those desiring to simply rest and relax, numerous parks provide solitude amidst breathtaking color.
100 years of growth not only brings the good, the enjoyable, and the beautiful, it also brings the problems. Mindful of the existing and future problems of a growing community, Spokane is actively seeking the proper solutions. Spokane's vitality, founded on a determined pioneer spirit, is ever-present as it celebrates the end of the first 100 years. 